This week's NFL Game of the Week takes you to two sites. First, here in New Orleans, where the Saints met the Buffalo Bills, and then to Baltimore's Memorial Stadium for the Colts-Houston Oilers game. In Baltimore, the Oilers enjoyed their first sunshine Sunday after 18 consecutive losses. While here in New Orleans, Sunday has also brought smiles with three Saint victories this season. But this week, the Saints face a rainmaker named O.J. Simpson. In just seven games, Simpson has already reached the coveted 1,000-yard mark, the first man ever to do it in so short a span, and largely due to his performance and a young offensive line that is making the holes for him, the Bills have enjoyed a 5-2 and two start this season. O.J.'s legs have taken a lot of pressure off the arm of Joe Ferguson, the Bills' rookie quarterback who has established himself as the starter over four-year pro Dennis Shaw. With the threat of O.J., Ferguson's not been forced to throw much, and so has not been prone to rookie quarterback mistakes, thus accounting for Buffalo's strong start this season. For the Saints, the trigger man is St. Archie Manning. Strong of arm, Manning can also hoof it pretty well. And this combination, plus Manning's fiery leadership, have carried the Saints to wins over Detroit, Chicago, and last week, the powerful Washington Redskins. So in two separate settings, we witness happy days for two teams long down in the dumps. Houston, with an end to an horrendous 18-game loss string in Baltimore, and here, New Orleans, hoping to sustain their best start ever and gain their fourth win of the season. This time over the suddenly surging Buffalo Bills in the NFL Game of the Week. In the Saints stunner over the Redskins, Manning had led New Orleans to scores the first four times they had the ball. And they hoped to get a lead again against the Bills to force Ferguson into passing situations. After a short run, Manning began firing, getting a first down on an interference call, then another on Jess Phillips' nice catch, good for 20 yards. But once in Bill territory, Manning began to misfire, and finally on third down, he was forced out of the pocket by Jerry Patton, number 77, and Earl Edwards, number 73, and came up short of a first down. The Saints had come away empty on their first series, as would the Bills, for despite everyone in Tulane Stadium knowing who would get the call, Ferguson tried O.J. anyway. Simpson carried twice on the Bills' first possession and could manage but three yards. On the Saints' second series, Manning continued his passing attack and got results thanks to some sticky-fingered receivers. First, Jubilee Dunbar made a fine diving catch on a sideline pattern, and then Bob Newland made a super catch on a sideline and up. Newland's nifty nab brought the Saints into Buffalo territory for the second time, but they were quickly pushed back into Saint land when Walt Patulski, Patton, and Edwards dropped in and dropped Manning for a nine-yard loss. The Saints had been stopped again by the Bill defense, but the Bill offense stopped itself. Ferguson recovered his own fumble, but Buffalo was forced to punt from deep in Bill territory and surrender good field position near midfield. But after moving to the Bills' 34, the Saints, who moments before were catching everything Manning threw, somehow had had the glue washed from their hands. First, Newland, who had already made a great catch, dropped an easy one. 
Then Manning, although chased back almost 20 yards, dumped a screen to Bill Butler, only to have Butler drop the ball. The Saints had to settle for a field goal and led 3-0. But at the start of the second quarter, the Bills came up with their own case of bored hands. Tom Myers recovered Simpson's fumble, and only Ferguson's tackle saved a touchdown. Still, the Saints had a great break with possession on the Buffalo 30. But the Saints could not move, and the break was wasted when Bill McClard's field goal try thudded against the right upright. The Saints had wasted a golden opportunity, but their defense was still holding Simpson in check with just 16 yards to this point. And when the Saints took over again, Manning took matters into his own hands. After his run gained 11 yards, Manning scrambled away from the Buffalo rush and hit Joe Prophet for 14 more. Then from the nine, Manning dropped straight back and trusted Newland once more. Newland's good catch and crash brought the Saints a 10-0 lead. The New Orleans defense held Buffalo yet again. And with just 33 seconds left, the Saints went marching in again. Phillips went 18 yards through the Bills prevent defense Manning could not locate his primary receiver but successfully located profit swinging out of the backfield Profit carried to the Buffalo 32, and a penalty further moved the ball to the 17. And with just 16 seconds left, McClard hit to make the score 13-0 at the half. The Bills' zero could be largely attributed to the Saint defense that had held O.J. Simpson to just 30 yards in the first half. At the start of the second half, the Saint defense, led by number 78, Billy Newsom, was still handling the Bills' offensive line and manhandling O.J. Simpson. With O.J. in check, the Bills are not much of a scoring threat. So it was up to the Saint offense to chew up as much of the clock as they could, and getting a couple of big breaks, they were successfully accomplishing that task. When Manning fumbled, when hit by Potolsky, Jake Cup was Jake on the spot to recover Archie's blunder. Then on a fourth down, the Bills rough punter Steve O'Neill. The breaks did not lead to a score, but they were the kind of plays that extended New Orleans possession and kept the ball away from O.J. who was waiting to bust one. A 14-yard run, Simpson's longest of the day, started the Bills on a late third-period drive, and Ferguson advanced it 24 yards further on a scramble. The Bills eventually had a second and five on the St. 15, and who else to go to to get those critical yards? 
But on second down, number 30, Ernie Jackson came up fast to stop Simpson. Then on fourth and one, early in the fourth quarter, the entire left side of the Saint defense nailed Simpson. The Saints had rebuffed Buffalo's finest. Their gallant stand finished the Bills, and the Saint offense ate up more of the clock. Bills got the ball four more times, but against the tough hitting Saints, they could manage just one more first down. Finally, number 82, Bob Pollard, put Ferguson down for the fourth time in the game, and the Bills were finished. Jubilant John North, the Saint head coach, directed from the sidelines as his team ate up most of the rest of the clock. And New Orleans had the first shutout in their history. North has completed a remarkable turnabout with the Saints. They're a young team that had gotten off to a horrible start, but now by winning four of their last five games, they've reached the 500 level. And their four and four record is their best ever at this point of the season. Four victories have made Saints fans believe that their team is at last on the right track. Meanwhile, on this same Sunday in Baltimore, the Houston Oilers would be ecstatic if they could claim just one victory, for it would be their first since early in the 1972 season.